Well, tonight we're going to start a new series, and I told you guys a couple weeks ago, of course, obviously we were off last week uh, due to spring break and, and everything, and I know we've got several that are out tonight uh, due to different things, but tonight we're starting a new series, and over the next few weeks we're going to be covering all sorts of topics, everything from, um, you know, why do I need to respect my parents to uh, does God really have a purpose for me and uh, why does death occur and different things like that. So we're going to be covering a, a wide variety of topics and in different situations and things that are going to be happening and going on, uh, and, and that's great, and I'm looking really forward to it, but tonight, to kick everything off and to start this series, uh, I wanted to call in uh, a young lady who, just over the past few months, I've really gotten the opportunity to, to know a little bit more and to serve with, and, and I've just come to uh, to love her even more. I, I've, I've known her for a little while, and she probably didn't even realize that, but, but I, I've known her for a little bit, and I've been watching her, but what I've seen is how powerful her testimony is and how true she is to her story. And so I'm going to ask uh, Sienna Montgomery to come up, and she's going to share her story with us tonight and the testimony and whatever God has laid upon her heart. I told her it's all hers to share. And so Sienna, hun, you come on up, and uh, we'll get started tonight. Y'all welcome her. <laughs> and, uh, girl, I, th I thank a lot of you. I'm looking forward to hearing from you tonight. And uh, so it's all yours, okay? Can you guys hear me? How many of you guys, raise your hand, have heard the um, quote, don't judge a book by its cover? Let me just tell you, that's probably one of the most, like, truest quotes you've ever heard or seen. Because just recently, like, I've looked at that quote, and I'm like, people sometimes look at me and they're like, she can't do anything. She, she looks different. She can't do anything. Might surprise you. Oh. Well, let's start off. Um, when I was born, I was born here in Campbellsville, but um, I came out joking. Oh, um, they had noticed that something was wrong, but the doctors here they couldn't really tell what was wrong, so they sent me to Louisville. And um, the doctors there immediately picked up on it. They had um, they I guess diagnosed me. Um, I had Treaster Collins syndrome, and it's like a rare genetic disorder with like syndrome for growth and development of the facial bone. And like, one out of 10,000 kids are born with it each day. Um, basically, it's just like, where your facial bones, like, they all form and come out, mine just like, stop, I guess. I don't really know what happened. But that's what happened. <laughs> um, so, but, throughout my life, I've had to have numerous surgeries to help correct it. Um, overall, I've had 61 surgeries. Um, Thankfully, God healed me for each and every one of them. <laughs> some of those surgeries, you can go in, and you get out the same day, and some of them you go in, and you get out three weeks later, and it's great. But, like I said, thankfully, God healed me for each and every one of them. Um, tonight, I really just want to talk about, like, in this series, it's called Delt, and, like, Whenever I heard of it, oh, I was like, what does don't mean? I was like, I don't really know. So I try to think of it. If you're ever playing like a card game and you get the dealer hands you your cards, you're almost and like, how many of you are always just perfectly satisfied with the cards you get? You're just going to win the game right off the bat. Doesn't always happen. But you get those cards and you're almost stuck with them because you have to use them so you can move on throughout the game. You can eventually win the game or beat somebody in the game. It's kind of like with God. He gives, he'll give us stuff that we have to overcome or we get. We're not like we're stuck with it, but we have to use it so we can go out through life and do it. And I think I ask myself a lot of times, like I'd look in the mirror and I would just be like, I looked at it and I didn't like what I saw. There was a lot of times I would question God, and I was just like, why did you do this to me? I was like, one out of 10,000, you couldn't have gave it to somebody else. And I was like, why me, God? Why do I have to look different? Why do I have to go places and have people look at me or ask questions like, what's wrong? I was just like, why? I did not like it. And throughout my life, like I just dealt with it. I moved on. I never really gave God much credit for it. I could 
okay, you can start. No, no. Sorry. Um, I was asked why, and I didn't like it. I was almost like, maybe God, the spirit that taught me driving, but you didn't do this. You're like, what did you cause me? You caused me to have to go to the hospital, spend my summer break, spring, fall, winter break through the hospital, have a surgery. You know, school, I'll go to school with bandages and all this on me. Why? I didn't understand it. But throughout my life, I've just, I've grown up and I was like, well, here's what I have. Might as well make the most of it. I wasn't going to let the little disorder put me down. So I made it. I always try to do my best in school. <laughs> volleyball, I cheer, I'm really involved with my church, um, with the Emmaus, like I try to do everything I can just to show, look what God gave me, but look what I'm going to do with it, so like throughout my life I've just really been like, wow, but I've also been like, I'm not going to let it put me down, I'm not going to do it, I don't, I don't want to be on the, the outcast, but um, Recently, I went on the Chris list. If you guys have heard of that, I really encourage you to go. But I went on that, and that really changed my whole entire outlook on life. Because, like I said earlier, I blame God for making me look this way. I'd look in the mirror, and I, I wasn't happy. I wasn't satisfied. I, you know, put the thoughts behind my head and just went on. But whenever I went on this Chris list, oh, there was this talk, and it was called God Designs Me. And when I went, I wasn't really sure why I was going. My family had went, and they encouraged me to go, so that's why I went. But it turns out, in the end, I figured out why I went. But the second talk, is, it was called God Designs Me. And, like, instantly, when I saw the title, I was like, hmm. So the, the preacher started to the talk and like instantly I felt like everything in the world had just been blocked out I felt like all my attention was on this I was like I don't, I don't know I couldn't hear anything else but this guy talking and he told he told everybody that um, God does like he formed you before you were even born like he made you out of a mold and the dust he created you and he made you unique Everybody in this room, you may not know it, but you're all different. You're all unique. If you look at the person's hands beside you, you can look at your hands or look at your neighbors, and those aren't your palms. They're not the same. You have twins and triplets and identical people. They can look the same, but really they're not. God made each and every one of us different in our own unique way. And that preacher was telling me that, and I was like, yeah, you made me different. I was like, I don't know. I, was, I tried to block the preacher out because I was just like, I don't understand this, but he, he kept speaking. And, like, eventually he just, I felt like he broke me because I was like, okay, God, I get this. You made me, but what am I supposed to do with it? I was like, a lot of people are going to just look at me and they're not, they're going to feel sorry for me. They're going to, they're not going to think I can do this. God's like, just be patient. He's like, don't worry. So I was still really high strong, like what I was just told. I was like, I was really overwhelmed because I didn't, I was trying to speak it in because for 15 years I had been blaming God for making me like this. And that one day, I was like, Okay, so as the Christmas continued, we were on that first night later that day. Uh, your old pastor, Brian Rafferty, oh, he was talking to us, and oh, that it was like a time where if you want to get saved, you can get saved. You just pray about what you have been learning that day. And I sat there on my seat, and I was like, not ready to go up there, because everyone had been 
like Friday towards that altar and I was like not ready like I don't want to go up there and God's like go I'm like no I'm not going <laughs> I was like I'm not ready to go I was like you haven't shown me a whole lot I said you've shown me some but you haven't shown me a lot he's like just go he's like you'll figure it out later I was like okay so it, a little bit of time has passed and uh, we were getting ready to leave and this one lady she stands up she's like no she's like we're not leaving yet she's like there's some more people that haven't went up there that need to go up there so I was like no I didn't care <laughs> <laughs> I was so like I was like I don't know and God was just like I felt like he was yelling in my ear and like he did this but I don't have it <laughs> sorry <laughs> anyway he, God was just like I just gave you an answer that you should go look in the mirror and ask me cause like when I look in the mirror you see yourself you see the outside you don't really see the inside but it says in Genesis 127, it says, For you were made in my image. So when we look in the mirror, we should see, we can't see the inside, but we need to know that when we look in the mirror, we should see Jesus. Because he's the one that made us. And I just feel like now I can look in the mirror, and instead of asking myself, Why God? I can tell God, Thank you. Because there's so many times that. There's so many times I would, I would look at myself when I really should have been looking at him. And I'm just really glad I can finally realize it. it. took me a 15 years to fix this up. But anyway, oh, the lady was like, no, we can't go. And I was like, I don't know, God. She's like, I just gave you an answer. She's like, you gotta, you just have to get, she's like, I need you to come home to accept me so I can bring you throughout your life. She's like, I've got plans for you. She's like, you don't know it, but I have plans for you. And I was just like, I don't know, God. I was like, what am I going to do? She's like, just go up there. So I don't really know how my feet managed to come off the ground, but somehow I made it up to that altar. And I, God was just like, he was like, you can come home now. She's like, you've been wearing yourself out asking me questions and looking up stuff that's probably not that's not the answer. She's like, I'm your answer. She's like, you just have to come home to me and realize that I'm going to help you. And he was like, and he asked me a question. He's like, have I ever left you? She's like, all those times you've had surgery and you've been so close to dying. She's like, have I left you? And I was like, he was like, I'm never going to leave you. He's like, I'm going to carry you for all your days. And I was just like, okay. So I ended up getting saved that night. Uh, I was just like, so whenever I came off the altar, I, I felt like a whole new person. Like the feeling was really, it was unreal. And I was just like, okay. Like, let's take a deep breath. And I was like, okay. I finally knew the answer that I had been asking myself for 15 years. And I was just like, thank God. I was really happy about it. So now, um, God was like, now you can go tell people about it. I was like, we have to go tell people about it. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah. He's like, and I was like, well, I can't sing. Not at all can't really play any instruments. He's like, he, he goes, I'm calling you to go out and share what I've gave to you. He's like, that's what your plan is. I was like, okay. So, ended up at the end of the Christmas, we all got to talk about our weekend. And I just like, I don't know, like, what, I thought one word was going to come out of my mouth, but apparently a lot of words came out. And I just told everybody about my weekend, and I don't really remember it. It was God speaking to me, and 
Oh, boy. Okay. If it wasn't very long, uh, they had called and asked me to do SBA in our school. And so I did that, and I was like, I don't know, God. I was like, I think I need more time. I was like, I need time to kind of study a little bit. And I was just like, I know you're going to give me the words to say, but I don't know. So I think I had a little time, and it was almost a year I got asked to work for Red Crystal. Oh, I had been in this talk space, and it almost made me have to look on a, a different outlook of myself, because I had been, like, totally focused on God designed me this way. I never really looked at it another way. And God was like, you have to have faith in order to do the things you're doing. I was like, God? He's like, how do you think you go up there and cheer and play volleyball? He's like, what do you do when you're stuck or whenever you have to go? Oh, whenever you have surgery, sorry to be off topic, but if you have surgery, your parents can usually walk you to so far, and then you kind of have to go back to the operating room by yourself with the doctor. And he, like, God has reminded me of that. He's like, who do you think walks with you through the, through the rest of the way to the operating room? He was like, you have to have faith in me. I was like, okay. So I had given that talk, and, like, I was just overwhelmed with him because God had shown me new things, but God showed me a lot of new things that I would have never expected to see. And after I had worked for Christmas, um, I got to speak at a church in Russell Springs, and then I had got to speak at SBA again. And God's like, how do you feel? I was like, I feel pretty good. I was like, I think I like this. He's like, it doesn't matter what you like. He's like, this is what I want you to do. I was like, okay, <laughs> gotta let God handle it. <laughs> so I'm just really glad to be here tonight. Uh, God's really been speaking a lot of things to me. Um, I wrote down stuff. Well, I saw this quote today, and it was, um, for we are God's handiwork created in Jesus Christ to do good works, for God prepared us in advance to do and I was like, thank you, God. Because I was like, I think God's trying to tell me to talk about my calling more than just my whole life story. And I was just like, God, call, God calls each and every one of us to go out and serve him. You can sing, you can dance, you can go up to minister to people. And I feel like God told me, I gave you, I gave you this scripture calling because I knew you could overcome it. I knew you were strong enough to put the surgery behind and just focus on me. He's like, I'm going to get you through every surgery. Don't worry. He's like, I've got you through all of them. He's like, through every doctor's appointment I've had, God, I feel like God's been there. And I'm just like, he's like, don't worry about that. He's like, you focus on just telling others that it doesn't matter what we look like what we do, it doesn't matter. It's got, like, you can look in the mirror, and you may not like what you see, but you have to realize it's not about the outside. Satan's just trying to put thoughts in your head when you look at the mirror, and you're like, maybe I'm not pretty enough, or I don't look right. That's just Satan talking to you. You look at the inside, and you look what God made you to be. And that's just... just like look at the inside and sometimes whenever you feel like well God I know you made me but still why did you do this to me we, don't, we shouldn't question God because God's got a purpose for it he's going to use you in some way like I said it doesn't matter what we look like God's got a plan he's going to use you in some way and I just feel like this is what God's called me to do and I'm really excited about to see whatever plans God has for me. But, um, oh, yeah, I had a story, but it's kind of off topic, but we'll go. <laughs> Sorry, I told my mom earlier, I was like, I'm probably.
all the good of the lost coffee. She was like, oh, oh, if you've ever noticed, you can look outside when it rains or snow, and you see all the raindrops, they're all snowflakes falling down. If you ever look at those, think about how many of those raindrops hit the ground or how many snowflakes hit the ground. There's probably over a million. It's kind of like with us. Each of those raindrops or snowflakes, they all are snowflakes and they're all raindrops, but they don't look the same. Each of them look different, but they all come together and they're all just, they're all the same, but they're different. It's like with us. We all look different, but yet we're all the same. We don't all look the same, but we're all just human beings that God's created each and every one of us. And that's just a story I like to tell others because that was one of the stories that they had told me on my Christmas. And I was like, I never looked at it that way. So, that's just another thing. I have a letter. Oh, it was given to me on my Christmas. And it's just a letter that I almost look at this every day. Because as soon as I read this, like, I just started to cry like a baby because this letter, it means so much to me and I hope I can hold on to it for the rest of my life, but it just, I felt like God was really, really talking to me whenever I was reading this letter. I just wanted to share it with you guys. And it says, my child, you may not know me, but I know everything about you. I know when you sit down, when you rise up. I'm familiar with all of your ways. Every, even the very hairs on your head are numbered. You were made in my image. In me, you live and you may have your being. For you are my offspring. I knew you before you were even conceived. I chose you when I planned creation. You are not a mistake. For all of your days are written in my book. I determined the exact time of your birth and where you would live. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. I knit you together in your mother's womb and brought you on the fourth of the day you were born. I have been misrepresented by those who do not know me. I am not distant or angry, but I am the complete expression of love. And it is my desire to lavish my love on you, simply because you are my child and I am your father. I offer you more than your earthly father ever could, for I am your perfect father. Every good gift you receive comes from my hand, for I am your provider and I meet all of your needs. My plan for your future has always been filled with hope, because I love you with an everlasting love. My thoughts toward you are countless as the sand on the seashore. I rejoice over you with singing. I'll never stop doing good for you. For you are my treasured possession, and I desire to establish you with all of my heart and all of my soul. I want you to go and show, and I want to show you in great marvelous things. If you seek me with all of your heart, you will find me. Delight in me, and I will give you the desires of your heart. For it is I who gave you those desires. I am able to do more for you than you could ever possibly imagine. For I am your greatest encourager. I am also the Father who comforts you in all of your trouble. When you are broken hearted, I am close to you. As a shepherd carries its lamb, I have carried you close to my heart. One day, I will wipe away every tear from your eyes, and I'll take away all the pain that you have suffered on this earth. I am your Father, and I love you even as I love my son Jesus. For in, for in Jesus, my love for you is revealed. He is the exact representation of my being. And he came to demonstrate that I am for you, not against you. And to tell you that I am not counting your sins, Jesus died so that you and I could be re reconci reconciled. His death was the ultimate expression of my love for you. I gave up everything I love that I might gain your love. If you receive the gift of my son Jesus, you receive me. And nothing will ever separate you from my love again. Come home and I'll throw the biggest party heaven has ever seen. I have always been father and always will be father. My question is, will you be my child? I'm waiting for you. Love your dad, Almighty God. And the person that had gave this to me, it was the preacher that uh, had gave that talk, God Divine Jesus. And 
like, I asked some other girls if they had gotten this letter, and they were like, no. And I just feel like I think this was given to me for a reason, and that's why I just wanted to share it with you all. Like, this letter, it means so much to me. Like, it just, it reminds me every day that I'm here for a reason. God's got plans for me. He made me this way because I'm supposed to be made this way. He knew I was strong and that I could overcome it. And I'm just really ready to see what else God has planned for me. I'm ready to go through the surgeries that I have to have and not even worry about if I'm going to come home. Because I know that sometimes that even if I don't get to come home that same day, God's going to be by my side. He's not going to leave. He's going to hold my hand the whole way. I'm just really, really excited to see what else God has planned. And I just wanted to thank you guys for allowing me to be here tonight. If you don't get anything out of this, just know that you weren't a mistake. God doesn't make jumps. He makes you for a reason. Have a wonderful night. Amen. Amen. And see, and I think uh, I think it's awesome. I can relate with you so much because uh, I think God has called you. I think God's given you a special gift, and I think He's given you the talent and the ability to be able to speak and share your story. And it's evident because look how when you became obedient, look at the doors God began to open and fill for you. And you wait. You stay obedient. You stay faithful, and you trust in Him, and I promise those doors will triple, and they'll just begin to open more and more and more. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. All right. You know, she shared a, a love story from God, or a love letter from God, and, and I've heard that before. Man, that's so powerful. And I was sitting back there a while ago, and I was reading, actually, one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. <clears throat> it comes from Psalms 139. And I really, I fell in love with this scripture when I was in high school. And I decided that I really, really liked it. And, and, and it's very similar. You're going to hear parts because a lot of the love letters she read come from this. This is in the book of Psalms, 139. And it reads like this. And I don't want to read all of it to you, but I want to read some highlights. And I want to talk to you about something for just a minute. And it says, You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. And you're familiar with all of my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me to lawfully attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, Lord, you're there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will, will hide me, and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb, and I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm going to ask my worship team to come forward, please. <clears throat> How many of you all in this room have at some point in your life had somebody say, you are worthless, you're stupid, you're never going to make it, you're not going to amount to anything? Anybody ever been told that? Okay, I have. I, I remember people telling me I'd never preach. Actually, we, when we do the cardboard testimonies, my piece of cardboard, it actually says, it's up in my office, it says, told I would never preach. And, and the reasons I was told I'd never preach because of this vast sin in my life, I was told I'd never amount to anything because I hadn't been to... I hadn't graduated college, and I didn't go to seminary, and I didn't have all these little big fancy degrees and doctors and, and, I, and, and reverends and all these things in front of my name. And I said, you'll never amount to anything. And so I flipped it around, and I said, but now I, now I minister to over 150 students on a weekly basis. You know, 
And so look what God has, has done in, in, in my life. Look what God has done in Sienna's life. Look what God has done in your life. And so whenever anybody tells you that you're not going to amount to anything or, or, or you're just not good enough or, or maybe they're really putting you down, and I don't care who says it, and I know it's hurtful. I praise God that my mom and dad never said hurtful words like that, but unfortunately I realize that some of you all have to hear those hateful things. But can I tell you something? That's a lie from hell. That is a lie from hell. Because God says he knit you together in your mother's womb. He says he knew your thoughts before you even think them. He says he loves you so much, Amy, and he knows how many hairs are on your head. Now, honey, I love you, and other people love you, but I don't know how many hairs are on your head, and I'm not going to take the time to count. But God loves you so much, he knows it. And see, the thing is, is, is we try to discredit God, and when everything goes wrong in our lives, and when everything's falling, around, uh, falling down around us, we get so mad at God, and we want to blame everything on what God. So, God, this is your fault. God, why this? God, why that? God, why this? It's not God's fault. See, God's a loving God. He's a God who wants a relationship with you. He, he wants to become intimate with you. He wants something more than just a Sunday God and a Wednesday night God and praise God when I want to and do what I want to every time else. See, God is so much more, and He, and he desires that. In Isaiah, <clears throat> we are told that, that our thoughts are not His thoughts. What He wants us to do and what He has designed us for is not what we think it's going to be. I'll be honest with you. I knew, I, I knew God was calling me to be in the ministry, but I wanted to either go into the fire service and be a full-time firefighter somewhere or go work for the secret service man to kick some hind in. You know, I wanted to do something cool and, and everything. And then I ended up in the ministry, and I'm like, man, but man, I, I, how much more blessed am I because I was obedient to God? And you know, same thing as this. No matter what you may think you're going to end up, no matter where you think that God is taking you or where you want to go, what it comes down to is what God has planned for you. And see, here's the thing. We miss out on so much because we're so consumed and so worried about having the hippest clothes, living in the nicest house, hanging out with the best friends, and we're so worried about a little cotton-picking relationships and who we can date this week, next week, and the next week that we forget what God's purpose is. And guys, here's the deal. If God didn't love you, Gracie, he would have already removed his hand from your life. Do you realize there is breath in your body at this moment because the hand of God Almighty is upon your life? It is upon your life. And all he has to do is remove it and every breath will exit your body and you will fall over dead. But as long as the hand of God is over your life, there is hope for you, there is a future for you, and there is a purpose for you. You have to figure out what it is. You have to trust in God. And it may take some time. Because I'm going to be honest, I'm still learning what some of my purpose is. See, some of the things I wanted in life and I didn't get, and I got so mad about what with God, I'm like, God, why not this? I think all the time I look back, and, and it's really funny it's, I, to me. I, I would apply at churches, and I've told, I've told this a bunch, but I've, I've apply, I would apply to churches and uh they would say, oh, you're not married, can't hire you. And I applied to another church, and they're like, well, you didn't go to school, sorry, we can't hire you. And, and another church said, well, you're not married, or you hadn't been to school, so we can't hire you. But praise God, somebody, a church, and a leadership team had faith in God to say, hey, you know what? We don't need somebody with all them degrees. Bring somebody in who's willing to go and let them go. And so now look at this, guys. Look at the blessing that I have received in my life. And I'm not saying, hey, look at my life, I got it all together. But guys, because of my obedience, you, you are my blessing. You are what I live to, to teach and to preach and to serve with week after week after week. And so because of an obedience and following God, even when I got mad that things wasn't working out, because Zach, when I put in for one church and they told me no, I got mad. And so the thing is, is there's some of you in here tonight and because you're so frustrated about something that happened three or four years ago or ten years ago, maybe you've been raped or molested or abused, or maybe you're mad at somebody because they broke up with you and hurt you a little hard or whatever. Whatever the reason is, you're hanging on to something and you can't move into what God has for you because you won't let, you won't let go of the past. I heard a preacher just last night. I was listening to him, a dear friend of mine, and he was talking and he said that he had taken a backpack and he'd filled it up with rocks. And he put this backpack on. 
And he said it wasn't too bad for the first few minutes. But as he began to sit there and, and hold that backpack while he preached, as he preached for about an hour, that backpack was really heavy. So he set it down and he took it down and he took every rock, Maddie, and every rock had a different sin written on it. But aren't we the same way? Don't we pack along the same things in our life instead of just laying it down and letting God have control? Now I want you to think about this. How many people in this room would be bold enough to raise your hand and you say, something in my life is making me unhappy? Is there anybody in here who's bold enough to raise your hand and say, I, I'm unhappy with something in my life? Okay, so check this out. How many of you same people that just raised your hands and said something is wrong with your life, how many of you all would like to do something about that? Hopefully all of you. If, you. if you raised your hand for one and not the other, you got a problem. But here's the deal. Can I tell you what the fix is? It's not Daniel. It's not Elkhorn. It's not Living Grace. It's not a big worship team. It's Jesus. It's Jesus Christ. I, I tell people all the time, I, I was speaking to uh, Eddie Finn. He just took a job as a, as a youth pastor here in town. And he was coming, and, and we were sharing stories yesterday and talking. And I said, Eddie, I said, you know what I love about youth ministry? He said, what? And I said, youth ministry is 95% listening, 4% advising, and 1%, Jared, I get to sit back and watch you all do what you want to do with it. See, I advise you 95% of the time, 4% of it, or 95% of the time I listen, 4% of it I get to advise, and 1% I get to watch you all do whatever you want to do. And the thing is, you come to me and you're like, Daniel, my life's messed up and so and so's dying of cancer and I'm so sick and tired of this and mom and dad are getting a divorce and I don't know what else to do. And I'm like, have you prayed? No. And I, I'm like, well, don't you think you should start with square one first? See, here, here's the deal, guys. Unless we take it to the cross and unless we hand it over to Jesus, what good is it doing for us to pack it around? Listen, I'm a pastor, but I can't fix it. I'm a pastor, but there's nothing I can do for it. You have to make the decision. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I want to ask you to stand to your feet. Nobody talking, nobody giggling, nobody poking, carrying on. And here's what I want you to do. Out of reverence for the Lord, I want you to bow your head and close your eyes. I'm not going to ask you to do anything crazy. Nothing's going to happen up here. There's no magic tricks. Nothing's going to appear or disappear. But I'm going to ask you to become humble just for a second and to become still just for a second and I want you to look at your life and examine your life and tell me not literally but tell yourself what it is that you need to do to get it right with the Lord you see I look at you all and you want you know what drives me in ministry is because I know that you all have a future and a purpose for life and so many of you have given up and you are literally in the middle of an ocean drowning with depression, suicidal thoughts. You, you, you're mad because something's happened in your life. Your parents are getting a divorce. Somebody's sick and dying and you don't understand. So you are drowning in this ocean and you have completely taken off your life vest. And you are falling down faster and faster and faster. Can I tell you something tonight? Here comes the life preserver. You better grab hold. And his name is Jesus. And if you will catch hold and allow him to pull you back up, guys, there is hope and there is a future for you. And the better, the faster we begin to, to understand that, the better off we're going to be. And so what I want you to do with nobody looking around, every head bowed and every eye closed, and we're just going to be reverent to the Lord just for a minute. I just want you all to spend just a couple of seconds and you ask God, whether it's in this altar, whether it's in the seat you're in, whether you're a staff member, whether you're up in the, in the upper room, no matter what's going on, you need to spend a second and ask God, God, what is it in my life that I need to get rid of so that I can become better for you? God, is there, is there some kind of insecurity I need to let go of? God, do you have a purpose for me? God, would you reveal that purpose to me? Lord, what is it that we need to do to serve you better? God, Lord, bless this time. Lord, bless these students. God, the, the altar's filling up, Lord, and I know so many more of them need to be down there. And Lord, I know so many have questions about why they are here and what is their purpose and can God really use me? 
And Lord, I just pray that tonight that you would confirm that to them. God, that you would give them the answer of, yes, you do have a purpose, and yes, you will use them, but they have to fall under total surrender to you. And so, God, no matter what the difficulty is, no matter what the thought process is, no matter how hard they're struggling or how many lies Satan is telling them, God, I pray right now, Lord, for that student who is grasping onto the back of that chair and is scared to let go, Father God, would you just raise their hand up off of that chair and let them come forward, and Lord, let them find peace. Lord, help them not to cry themselves to sleep anymore at night. God, help them not to be worried about the past that, that they had. Lord, help them not to worry about that abortion they've dealt with. Lord, help them not to worry about the, 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 opportun- or the, the thing that happened, Lord, when they were hurt and they were raped. Father God, I pray that they'll be focused on you and just what you need to do for them. And God, as we turn this time over to you, I pray that you continue to move in a powerful way. Lord, just have your will. Have your will, Lord.